Good morning and welcome to Eastside Baptist Church. If you are not a member or a regular tender at Eastside, you're a special guest. I hope you got a bulletin when you came in. If you did, you're going to see there's a welcome tab on the edge of that bulletin. Please fill that out, tear it off, and drop it in the offering plate because we do want to get to know you a little bit better and we want to extend a special welcome to you. If you are a first time guest, at the end of the service, I'm going to be near the welcome uh, desk in the vestibule. Would you come by and just introduce yourself or if you brought a guest, bring them by and introduce them to me because we have a special gift for our first time guests and we do want to make sure that you get that. Uh, if you have uh, your bulletin, let me just uh, note a couple of things this morning. Uh, first of all, the very last entry in our ministry opportunities there says, thank you for your Lottie Moon giving. We received $6,831.81 today for Lottie Moon. <clears throat> that was against a goal of just $5,000. So we exceeded our goal by uh, more than $1,800, and that's a credit to the generosity of Eastside Baptist Church and your devotion to missions and telling people about Jesus uh, around the world. Uh, you also have an insert in there. Of course, this is uh, uh, January is Stewardship Month in Southern Baptist Convention, and we're in the middle of a series on stewardship, and I thought it was appropriate to include a little insert in there about our cooperative program. And I have, a number, have had a number of people ask me about the cooperative program, what is the cooperative program, and I thought I'd take just a moment this morning to explain to you what this is. Back in 1925, Southern Baptists decided to get together and come up with a way to support missions work around the world without having to have missionaries leave the field and come home and go around and visit churches and raise money. And so what Southern Baptists do is we pool our money through our budget. We take a certain amount of money out of our budget, and we give it to missions work through the cooperative program. And uh, <clears throat> this gives you a little breakdown of the cooperative program here. Uh, world missions, ministries, 73% goes to that. Uh, theological education, 22%. Uh, Southern Baptist operating budget, 2.9%, and the Christian Ethics Religious Liberty Commission, 1.65%. But 73% of what we give to Quadra Program through our budget actually goes to missions work. And a portion of everything that you put in the plate actually goes to the cooperative program. Uh, every month we, we write a check and send it to the cooperative program to missions. So if you want to continue to support missions through the year, give through, the tithe, through, through your tithes and offerings. And a portion will go to support missions, missions around the world. The cooperative program is the greatest single program in human history for supporting world missions. Uh, because of the cooperative program, folks, we have the largest missions uh, uh, sending organizations in the world in, in uh, Protestant uh, uh, denominations. And it's all because of cooperative programs. So we need to be supportive of that. And I encourage you to give generously to support that as well. Uh, once again, we extend a welcome to each one of you. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless our time together this morning. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your love, your kindness, and your mercy. You have given us so many wonderful gifts and blessings. And we know, Lord, that none of it really belongs to us. We're just stewards of it. But we give you thanks for it anyway. Lord, we thank you for this, this great blessing that you have given us of being allowed to gather this morning as your people in this place. We thank you for this wonderful church, this great church that you have set in this place. We thank you for the resources and the facilities that you provided us with. We thank you for the staff that you have given us. And Lord, we ask that you would just receive our, our honor, our glory, our praises this morning. And Lord, your Holy Spirit would move in power amongst us convict us of sin and shortcoming that we might repent, but that most of all, Lord, that you might be worshiped and glorified in, in a spirit and in truth this morning. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will move especially upon the heart of that one who does not know Christ, and that you would draw them to salvation, because we know, Lord, that you're glorified in no greater way than when one lost person comes to Christ. We thank you for this privilege of being here. We thank you for the fellowship of the saints. We thank you for the word of God and the privilege of praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand with us as we sing our first hymn this morning. I've heard it may be a new one for many of you, but I think it's a great one, so we'll learn a new hymn this morning if you don't know it. Hymn number 414, Because I Have Been Given Much. We'll sing all three verses. Because I have been given much, I too.
and you may be seated. As we come this time in our church, it's time for a deacon prayer time. Uh, we do have some, some needs. Miss, Miss Susan over here is not feeling well on the organ this morning. So lift Susan up. Uh, Miss Ann Mulligan, she's at home going through some upper respiratory. I know there's others in our church that are battling. Uh, I've been battling for a month trying to get rid of my crud. But um, others going through uh, times of illness, um, things going on in their lives. Remember Miss Pat, Miss Joe Leslie, uh, in the past and their brother. Um, others uh, that are here that might have been out. I'm looking around, don't see anybody. I'm sure that if I miss you, don't, don't get discouraged about that. But uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. As I pray, y'all pray, uh, pray for our church, pray for our church needs, and pray um, specifically if there's something that God has put upon your heart, some little thing, the little ministry in this church, uh, God has called us not to, we be, we're being fed, we want to be fed, but he's called us to go out and feed also. And we can feed in our actions, our attitudes, a little work here at the church, uh, doing a little ministry is whatever. There's opportunities here. And just pray that God would open up and, and just speak to you and speak uh, what he might have us to do uh, in, in your lives. Father, I, I thank you for the blessings you've given us. I thank you, God, for loving us in the way that you do. And Father, for giving us the opportunity to come and worship. And Lord, we can worship uh, uh, freely right now, but God, we realize that uh, possibly in just a few years or, or a shorter time than that, we might that freedom might not be there. And I pray, Heavenly Father, God, as, as we do have that time to, to love and to, to pray and to encourage and just to come together and fellowship, I hey, pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you just bless us. Father, I thank you for each person in this church. I pray, God, that for each individual, I ask God that you just bless. And there's many meet, needs that need to be met, and there's situations going on in lives and going on in families. And Father, they're going on uh, possibly with with jobs, uh, finances, marital problems, uh, just sickness, and, and Father, their death. And God, we could just go on and on. But Lord, this is a part of living and. And God, we know that we can turn to you, and God, you, you are the answer for us. And Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you just bless, bless this church, 
bless our ministry. Father, help us to be a shining light in, in liberty. But God, we're not the only church. And I pray, Father, for those other churches that are assembled today. I pray for their pastors. I pray, God, that you just give them the, the words that they have, that you have for them. And, and Lord, I, I pray for uh, our, our pastor. I lift him up to you. I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you just, uh, these next few moments, give him the words that we have. I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you guide and direct everything that he has to say. It. And Father, as those words go out, Father, they'd go out and they'd touch our hearts. They'd speak to us. They'd minister to us. Minister through us. And Father, for this next time, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you just bind Satan from this service. God, that the Holy Spirit would be able to work. And Lord, we just thank you for what you do. Thank you for your blessings. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I ask you to stand for our offertory hymn, hymn number 417. We're going to sing two verses. May we stand and sing, please? Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here today, Father. And Father, we just want to thank you for everything you've done in our lives and how you've blessed us and used us. Father, we ask you to be with Tim today as he brings a message to us. Father, we also want to uh, just ask for, uh, you give him souls for his labor, Father. Father, we pray that if someone's lost today and they hear the message, they will come to know you as their personal Savior. Again, Father, bless these tithes and offers. Bless the giver and the gift. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen.
think many of you may know this morning, so if you know it and then uh, God moves you in such a In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe 
till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, there is no need to try, for there's no wind of sorrow, there's no hope by and by, but I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise where the storm never darkens the skies. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright, peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. When the storm passes over, when the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm Thank you, Crystal. That was beautiful. And thank you, choir, for that special as well. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 12. Beginning in verse 42 this morning, Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 42, we're continuing our series on stewardship since January is Stewardship Month in the Southern Baptist Convention, and so we're talking about stewardship. And last week we saw the principle, a principle that Christ taught, which is that it is more blessed to give than to receive. This week I want to emphasize another principle, a different principle that Christ taught, and that is to whom much is given... Much is required. In our scripture this morning, Jesus is telling a parable of two servants. Both of them were disobedient, and both are punished. But notice that their punishment differs based on what they have received. In verse 42, the scripture says, And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his master will make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers." And that servant who knew, who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him they will ask the more. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us your truth and your holy, inspired, and inerrant word. We ask, Lord, that we would hear it and their hearts would be tender and softened. That, Lord, that we would not hold on in a, a, uh, uh, a 
uh, selfish and, and greedy manner to this world and the things of this world, but that, Lord, that we would be generous of heart to you and to your, your uh, kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Bishop Fulton Sheen said one time that we have a Statue of Liberty on the East Coast. He said what we really need is a Statue of Responsibility on the West Coast. And the truth is that as Americans, we jealously uh, guard our, our rights. We all demand our rights. <coughs> we all demand our liberties. We guard our liberties. But in the Bible, liberty is always connected to responsibility. You never see the two divorced. Liberty and responsibility both go hand in hand. In our scripture this morning, as I said, Jesus gives us this parable of two servants. And both are disobedient, both are punished, but notice that their punishment is different. One servant's disobedience was deliberate and willful because he knew to do good and did not do it. Verse 47, And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he says there's a second servant. The second servant disobeyed, disobeyed, but he disobeyed out of ignorance. Verse 48. But he who did not know, yet committed things deserving of stripes, (coughs) shall be beaten with few. So the clear teaching of the Scripture then is that there will be levels of punishment. There will be levels of punishment in hell. There will be levels of reward in heaven. And what will determine the levels of punishment and reward? Well, verse 48. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. The standard then is this. God holds us accountable in direct proportion to how much he has given us. To whom much is given, much shall be required. And this works its way out in our life in, in a number of different ways. And this morning I want to talk about that as in how it regards stewardship. How this affects stewardship. And first of all, we need to remember that we are going to be held accountable according to our abilities. We will be held accountable according to our abilities. In America, we like to say that all men are created.